Alright, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Flamewell2001, and we are here today to discuss my opinions on Sun and Moon. This is my Sun and Moon review. Huzzah! Y'all ready? I'm ready. Alright, I just beat Sun and Moon. Without any spoilers, I'm gonna share my thoughts. First off, graphically, this is definitely the best looking Pokemon game we've ever played. There's the obvious advancement of 20 years worth of technology into the game, which makes it look glorious. I... It was a beautiful, beautiful game. Dynamic camera angles were decent. Were, were just as good as X and Y. Um, character customization was nice. My biggest issue, though, is there's some glaring issues with said graphics. We're pretty much at the limit of what the 3DS can do. When it came to 2v2 battles and 4v4 battles, the game was nearly unplayable. The, the, you could, there was a noticeable amount of drop frames in battle. It was an awesome decision for the... Game makers to make it so that you could see your trainer and your opponents on the field at the same time. However, I feel, personally, this is my feelings, it would have been better for them gameplay-wise if they had removed the players from the field for multi-battles to stop the frame drops. The same was the same issue with the multi-battles with the uh, Pokemon calling in allies as well as the totem battles. Character customization in Sun and Moon was a nice return to what we saw in X and Y, and I really enjoyed being able to make the characters look the way I wanted them to. The fact that the characters be didn't become chimby when they walked around was an interesting change. Um, it made the areas more dynamic and larger, which I liked, but I can go either way with that. The story was more detailed than I have experienced so far. Um, Team Skull as a, a group is a hilarious set of enemies, and as you go through the story, I found them relatable and at times enduring. Uh, the twist the story takes was surprising and quite deeper than I anticipated based on the lighthearted approach taken at the beginning of the games initially. However, the game is extremely, extremely dialogue heavy, which makes it feel like it drags on in part simply because you're being told to do the same thing by four different people. My biggest complaint, not so much, but fuck Rotom. In all seriousness, fuck that guy. He's not as annoying as the hey, 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 listen fairy from that Zelda game. But if three or four different characters in the story have already told me to go to a certain location, Rotom further telling me the same bullshit that I've already heard four times, it's annoying. Now, I do like the fact that Rotom has a flag that shows me where I'm going, but if Rotom's going to tell me, Hey, the other four characters that just told you to go to Route so-and-so, we should go there. Well, thanks, Rotom, but I want to see the map so I know where the flag is. I don't need you telling me where to go. If I'm lost, there's an option to tap on the center of the screen to see it. I'll just do that. And then furthermore, if I'm trying to click on the map, and you give me location information because I misclicked slightly, that's obnoxious. Rotom annoys me at times. Severely. Now... This is probably one of my bigger gripes. But the new Alohan forms of Generation 1, barring few exemptions, while looking really interesting and kind of a nice change to see past Pokemon that we loved from Gen 1 back in Gen, t in Gen 7 with new typing, they're fucking garbage. And minus Alohan Grimer, they are practically unplayable in my opinion. Um, you've lost a lot of the uniqueness of that Pokemon while giving them extremely glaring weaknesses. Alolan Raichu is weak to anything that knows dark moves and bite. He's weak to bug. You've completely removed what made Raichu special and made him useless. It's the same with Alolan Vulpix. It looks cool. It's weak against rock just like it's fire type and it's ice, one of the weakest types in the game. Then you have Steel Sandshrew. Steel and ice. He's, he's quad weak to fire completely useless. Um, the only exception I can see is Muck. He's poison and dark and not weak against psychic types. It's the only one I saw with any kind of advantages from the Gen 1 remakes that uh, they're just unplayable. Hell, even in the story they were unplayable for me. Anyways, I had some really major issues. Um, the 80 new Pokemon that were added to the mix are definitely unique. Minor spoilers, though. Majority of the Pokemon on the first island are almost all Gen 1 Pokemon. What's the point of giving me a new Gen if you're only going to give me my old Pokemon? I love Gen 1 Pokemon. Majority of my crew ended up being Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon. Because that's what the game threw at me at the beginning. And by the time I got into the new areas, I wasn't going to take the time to level up new ones. Which I could have. That's a gameplay choice on my end. But... It seemed weird to me. I'd hope most of the newer Pokemon would have been available at the very beginning of the game. 
So I could have an entire squad of Gen 7 Pokemon. But this was never the case as far as I was playing. I ended up with three Gen 7 Pokemon at the most on my team, and most of them got replaced. I started out with a Pichu from Gen 2. I started out with a Machop that they traded me at the beginning of the game. I got my starter, which, you know, whatever. I got an Eevee much later on and evolved in into a Gen 2 Pokemon. So, minus two Pokemon on my team, and at the end, maybe three, all I had was Gen 2 and Gen 1 Pokemon. The first island. We gotta talk about the first island. It's an unskippable tutorial. Which really, really, really drags on the story. There are some plot critical points that happen on the first island that set the course for the rest of the game. Those are fine. I like that being there. My problem is give me an option that makes me skip the tutorial part of the story and let me just get right into the game. One, if I can't figure it out, I'll look it up. If I can't figure it out, yeah, I need a tutorial, but I've been doing this for 20 years. I kind of know what I'm doing at this point. So I need I, I would have loved an option to skip. But instead you spend two to six hours on the first island just trying to leave the first island for some basic mechanics, some basic exploration, learning the new changes to the game. Well, these are great things to know and a story-driven stuff, but it is so long and drags so hard on the rest of the game, and then you get onto Island 2 and 3 and the story's just going full tilt. But I've wasted two to six hours just trying to get to the story and it makes it feel slower than it needs to be um, and that could just be that it, it wore on my patience is all I'm gonna say it took me forever to get off the first island and it's silly to me um, the changes to HMs were stellar being able to ride Pokemon instead of HMs is amazing um, minor spoilers though the surfing mechanic was kinda silly there's not large bodies of water like in previous generations. I'm on an island paradise, but there's not huge areas to surf in. Now, that's not a big deal to me. It was just more like a weird design choice in my head that's like, I don't know why they did this. Um, but due to the immensity of the game and the fact that I simply wanted to progress the story and solve the mysteries, I wasn't that upset about it. But that's definitely an issue. Um, after battles, being able to pet your Pokemon and removing their statuses is adorable. It's just adorable. Being able to pet your Pokemon and loving them, and then if they get high enough stats in these abilities, being able to have them dodge, have them cure their own statuses, have them endure hits that would normally kill them, was a game changer for me. There are so many points where my Pokemon hadn't dodged, or removed its own status, or endured a hit it shouldn't have lived through, I'd have had a game over. I would have had a game over. I think that's really cool. Alright. Your rival Hal. Your friendly rival. He's fucking garbage. I hate him. He's obnoxious. Um, overall, I have to say, I'd give the game a 9 out of 10. I have some major issues. Those major issues didn't make the game unplayable. It didn't change the pacing too much. Um, there were definitely pacey issues with the storytelling, but the story was amazing. It covers throughout the entire story. The removal of gems is kind of weird to me, but you still end up fighting battles the exact same way it would have been if there had been gems. They're just called something different, and the story is actually a dr driven around these characters. Um, the graphics are gorgeous. The dynamic camera angles are the same thing we saw in X and Y. The character customization, similar to what we saw in X and Y, is terrific. Just amazing. The new Gen 7 Pokemon, I love them. They're, they're, they're amazing. I really, really like them. Um, I'd like to have seen more of them, but there are limits. We're at 800-some Pokemon now. There's only so much you can program into a game, right? Um, the Alolan 4 Gen 1 Pokemon, I, I liked them in concept. They were useless on paper for me. I, I was not happy with them. Um, with that being said, really enjoyed the game. I would play again. We'll play again. Um, the playthrough will continue here on YouTube, obviously. we've I've been quite busy. Um, I've recorded everything except for Endgame at this point. We're not, Well, correction. I've beaten the Elite Four. I haven't done the after-game playthrough. We're going to do that separately. But 
We'll be uploading every day until I've completed Sun and, or Pokemon Sun on here. So I look forward to seeing y'all. Um, please enjoy that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you haven't already and you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye!